brothers and sisters um over christmas my my mom and dad gave me a book um as part of my christmas present and it was about it's a book called the song of silence by the journey of saint jean jugon a french saint who founded the little sisters of the poor her journey was very interesting because she she grew up in this um coastal village in france her father had was lost at sea she knew suffering and loss from a very early age and I suppose this created in her a real empathy for those who suffer. And she started just incarnating the gospel in her life, searching for, for the poor, the afflicted, just like Christ searched to heal um, with his miracles, but also with his loving presence, bringing the love of God, the love of his father that he enjoyed from all eternity to souls, to ease their hearts with, with the peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit. And Saint Jeanne did the same. She she started to found houses which eventually became very popular and took off to to serve the poorest of the poor and to 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 galvanize um, Christian love into a real living icon of of God uh, in this world, and just like how God treats the saints, sometimes she was it was her life was like a bit of a, a paradox and a mystery because she founded this community and eventually she was um, dispossessed of being in charge and she ended up going to the bottom. And she ended up being neglected, um, uh, unfortunately. And uh, but she she accepted this as the mystery of God's providence for her. And eventually, she started to realize what God was doing, why He took her from being at the top, because He realized that she too had to experience the abandonment of the very people that she would serve, that she would have to feel the rejection, that she will have to feel dispossessed and, and, and to enter into that the deep mystery of suffering that Christ experienced. And in this night, in this this being pulled from the top to be at the low, she was taught humility and, and she found immense freedom. She was stripped of everything and all she was left is with her inner resources. In other words, this inner world of meeting God and she found tremendous joy and tremendous freedom. And here's a word towards the end of her life that really touches my heart. And it just speaks to the simplicity of her soul. It's almost like Job, who's been through all these afflictions and then sees God and realizes that who might even question God. He's so awesome, so powerful, so loving, so wise that even my 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 most deepest tragedies, um, you know, they kind of melt away before this revelation of God. And this is very easy for us to say when we're not suffering and even for myself right now. But there's deep, still a deep, deep truth that we have to challenge ourselves with, that, that we need to be challenged with by the experience of Job in the scripture and also St. John. And she says towards her life, she says, one, when you're old, she says this to a novice because she was, she ended up living in a house um, where the young girls were, were being formed. And then she realized again, God's plan that by living in that house, she mysteriously, if she was at the top, she would have been traveling all over. But in this house of formation, she was actually able to impart to these young girls the very charism that she was given to found the order. And uh, right until towards her death, she was very much forgotten. Even the young sister didn't even realize she was the foundress. And uh, towards the end, she had to be called into a council when they were debating their charism and they, she was acknowledged. And it was like God allowed her anonymity to, to lift. Um, but anyway, she would say to the novices, when you are old, you will no longer see anything. As for me, I no longer see anything but God. He sees me. That is enough. And those really powerful words, those are words of a saint. He sees me. That is enough. Just the simplicity that she came to. She was totally stripped of everything. And I just want to read to you. It's a bit harrowing, but it's the experience of the Jewish girl, Etty Hilsom. Um, I just need to find it here. And it, it's, it's, it's her experience too in, in the concentration camps when too, she, she was stripped of everything. And she speaks about, about basically all the people, uh, who would have experienced great fame and stuff. All of it was taken away from them, but left only with their inner ability to find inner freedom. And she says, among those who get washed up on this arid stretch of more 500 meters by 600, can also be found stars of the political and cultural life of the cities. Around them, the theater sets that protected them have been swept away at a stroke by a mighty force. And here they are, still trembling and disorientated. On this stage, which is bare and exposed to the winds, named Westerbrook, torn away from their context, 
their silhouettes still carry the palpable aura that attaches itself to the eventual life of a society more complex than this one. They walk alongside the thin barbed wire, their vulnerable figures silhouetted, life-size, against the vast expanse of the sky. You have to see them walking thus. The sturdy armor forged for them by their social position, fame and fortune has shattered around them, leaving them wearing only the thin shirt of their humanity. They find themselves in an empty space, bounded only by sky and earth, and which they will have to furnish from their own inner resources. That is all they have left. This very powerful word that all they had left was these inner resources. And this same woman, Etielsam, she found immense freedom and purpose and joy in the midst of a concentration camp. Um, it just ought to challenge us that there's something inside of us that we could connect with that will bring us to greater fulfillment. And that is the Lord.